Today I'm going to talk to you about the River Eden case study and this is one of our named case studies for our GCSE geography. It comes up in the syllabus um, as you need to have a case study of two landscapes in the UK, one coastal landscape and one river landscape or river basin. Um, the key thing is this is the river or the river basin and it's not just looking at part of a river, it's looking at the whole river from its source to its mouth. Um, including the study of landforms, geomorphic processes, human activity, um, and that is the River Eden for us. So we're looking at the River Eden for our river case study. We also look at uh, coasts, but today it's about the River Eden as our river case study. So where is the River Eden? Well, the River Eden is located in the northwest of England. It's located next to the Lake District and it runs, um, runs roughly speaking, kind of in a northwesterly direction. And we can see on the right hand map on your screen, um, the red line that represents the River Eden running through the Carlisle um, and in eventually to the Irish Sea. So that's the River Eden. And it's located in uh, northwest England, I said. Um, it begins in the map between the mountains of the Lake Districts and the Pennines. Its source is actually the Pennine Hills in South Cumbria. It flows northwest through Appleby in Westmoreland and Carlisle. The mouth is in the Soloway Firth at the Scottish border. Um, and it's largely a rural area with many scenic landscapes and is popular with tourists. So, what are some of the landforms in the river. The first is waterfalls um, and the first waterfall is a waterfall called Hell Gill Force. Now you need to know the names of specific landforms. You can't just say there's waterfalls, you need to say Hell Gill Force and it's formed where there's a change in rock type from hard limestone to softer sandstone. The water has eroded the soft rock forming a step in the river channel and below the waterfall, there's a steep sided gorge left behind the waterfalls retreated up the valley. And it's really important that you remember from this, it's limestone and sandstone. They're the two uh, rock types involved because that's the specific details the examiner will be looking for. Next, we're going to talk about meanders. OK, and meanders occur as the river gets bigger. Um, it becomes more has more tributaries join it and you get lateral erosion um, and the river floor becomes wider and flatter um, for example near Salkild and that's this meander we can see on the screen and they've grown um, and some have began to be cut off to form oxbow lakes and one example of this is where Brigglebeck joins the Eden near Salkild. In the upper course of the river um, like most rivers, they have a V-shaped valley, um, and this is when we have streams flowing down the steep slopes of the hillside at the edge of the basin. Um, and we've also got weathering happening here. Um, so freeze thaw happens here um, and traction and erosion happens as well. Um, and this kind of carves out these steep sided valleys in the North Lake District. Back now to the lower course of the river and on the River Eden, we've got Carlisle, which is built on the floodplain to the River Eden. As a reminder, the floodplains is the flat land that is found either side of the river. Um, and on the floodplain, the land is lower lying, it's flatter um, and it's created as meanders um, migrate across the valley, valley floor. This causes the floodplain to become wider. Sediment has also been deposited when the river has flooded, building up on this flood plain. Um, and this is allowed, this is provided flat land, fertile soils, um, which is good for towns like Carlisle. And that's why Carlisle has been built there. So the geology, um, harder rocks around the river um, basin have remained. Uh, and we've talked about one of these being exposed limestone. Um, that's not actually a picture of limestone, no. Um, and this is more general igneous rocks as pictured um, in the West that are impermeable. Um, the reason why the geology is important because it's got impermeable rocks, 
it means that the water can't soak in. Um, so unlike where you've got permeable rocks, um, the water soaks in, you get underground water flow. Where you've got the igneous rocks in the west and it's impermeable, um, lots of streams forms uh, which create V-shaped valleys. Now, part of the river um, is related to its climate. And if we think about the climatic factors, the temperature of Carl Isle um, it's generally mild winters um, with some colder temperatures um, on high ground, which may cause freeze thaw weathering. Um, and it breaks up the rocks on the valley slides. Those were the kind of scree slopes we were talking about earlier um, happening in the upper course of the river. And if we think about rainfall, um, during intense rainfall, the river becomes saturated and this increases sorry the land around the river becomes saturated and this increases transportation erosion how have humans managed the river eden well they build flood walls and embankments along the both the river eden and the river Kaldu um, in carlisle so these flood walls and embankments because we said carlisle is built on flat land um, these raised walls stop the um, protect the flat land from being flooded um, and they prevent deposition they prevent water there um, they prevent from what we see on the map which is the area becoming inundated with water there's also creation of reservoirs so castle carrick brett beck which is a tributary of the river eden um, so part of its drainage basin has been dammed to create a reservoir and reservoirs limit the natural flow of water downstream Material carried by the river is deposited in the reservoir and not along its natural course. The final thing that's been done is planting of trees and near Dalston, a thousand trees have been pl planted um, to reduce flooding um, and the trees intercept rainfall and stop surface runoff. So what human activity has influenced the River Eden Basin? So I've talked about this a little bit on previous slides, but the main one is deforestation. Natural woodland and heathland have been cleared from many upland areas. This increases surface runoff when it rains and more water ends up in the river channels more quickly. This give, gives rivers more energy. Farming. Some upland areas have been drained of moisture to make them more suitable for farming. This reduces the stability of the soil, meaning that more soil is washed into the river channel by rain. So what would an exam question look like? So it might say something like this. Case study, the landscape of river, UK River Basin described, discussed the influence of geology in the formation of river landforms within your chosen river basin. I've got the marks seem on the screen there. I'm not going to pause and talk about that. If you want to read it, you can pause your video. Um, but the key thing is you must name River Basin. In this case, the Basin of the River Eden. And you must talk about landforms. So you can't just talk about geology in general. You need to talk about geology specific to the landform. So you need to talk about something like a formation of a waterfall. So I've had a go at doing this. And so I've got the question, discuss the influence of geology and the formation of river landforms in my chosen basin. So in the upper course of the River Eden, there is a layer of hard rock, limestone, over soft rock, sandstone. This means that the vertical erosion will wear away the soft rock more quickly, deepening the riverbed and creating a steep drop called a waterfall. So there I've got the name of the the waterfall in. I'm specific because I've mentioned that the names of the rock types. I haven't just said hard rock, soft rock. I've said limestone over sandstone. And then my evidence, my final bit, the softer rock is eroded more quickly and creates an overhang of harder rock. This happens at Hellgill waterfall on the River Tees. So that's my paragraph. Uh, that's my mini paragraph. And I would do a second one to get to my six marks. So you can pause, have a go at writing a second paragraph. You can rewatch this video. If you have a go at writing an answer, bring it to your geography teacher to show them.